Hi everyone. Um, good afternoon. My name is Victor. I'm a software engineer at the New York Times. Um, love Scholar. That's why I'm here today. And um, I'm a first time presenter in this event, so I'm a little bit nervous right now. Um, especially in this room, I took a lot of exam before. Um, at the New York Times, we have editors um, that distributing the content to the third party like Reuters and AP as a side business. We wanted to keep it from the, um, the main CMS that we have. So we make a separate system called Blackbeard. Oops, sorry. Oops. Okay, we have the system called Blackbeard to serve the need. So um, we built it in order to migrate from a legacy workflow um, that is coming from an old school window application. So we decided to move on to a single page web application. One of the biggest challenges is that um, we need to handle a fairly high volume of the real-time user interaction. Why? Um, people reading the article may think um, every article is written by a single author, but that's not the case. Actually, um, every article at least worked by five to ten editors. Um, some of them are responsible, responsible to write paragraphs, some to add notes, uh, some to proofread, a lot of things to do, M writing different version of the article on the timely basis, let's say uh, breaking news or the Olympic result. So um, imagine every user edit require a virtual lock of the article resources in order to not stepping on each other's toe. Um, every save or update we need to broadcast to all the user and we're talking about 300 to 400 article per day. So at the evening time, at the peak hour, um, our console UI may not be taking crazy like the trading system, but I can tell there's a decent amount of update floating around. And um, we decided to use Scala to build our exciting backend, and we, and we choose a play framework and the Archer as our skeleton and the um, WebSockers as our engine. So, um, how do we achieve our mission? Let me bring this up an overview of the system and I can give a little bit of talk. Before that, um, this is the current, current version that we have in our production system. Um, along the de development staging, we have upgraded the framework um, accordingly in different parts of the system, but this is what we have right now. We're happy with that, um, especially uh, when the merge of the Actor in the Future library in Scala that make the code more consistent. But we're still looking forward to upgrade to the Play 2.2. So um, let's start with a singleton actor here. We have an actor here is a root actor created from the actor system, sitting there forever waiting for any message to come in. Um, it serves as a gateway slash router for all any incoming message from the web sockets. So this is the implementation, actually just a singleton object, uh, just a singleton object um, returning a lazy value of the, um, of the actor. It is actually a pretty good pattern to follow when your actor needs to talk to outside of your actor system because you could centralize all the message through a single endpoint. So, one of my favorite user, yo, the login. The master node is saying, hey, this is the first uh, subscribe login to this user account. Let's create a child node. So, boom, a child, node, a child actor called if node is created as well as the iterating enumerator. We return the pair to the front end, so the connection is done. Yoda is happy using the web sockets right now. The iterating implementation here is a little bit tricky because we need to route every single message to the parent of the current node, which happens to, happen to be the master node. And the enumerator is much straightforward, just the decoration. So now, Yoda decide lock in again on the other machine, or other tab, I don't know. But this time, the master node is saying, hey, we already have a leaf node for this user account. So let's simply just return the iterator and enumerator to establish the connection. And yes, the, um, 
multiple, multiple connections through a single account share exactly the same instance of the iterator and the enumerator. And that is a trick how we have a single update, a single message push could result at the end of the road, multiple front end would get the update simultaneously. This is pretty cool. And we have a second user login that later, as you expected, the same flow happened. And then the question come here. When you don't want to talk to that waiter saying, hey, I want to grab a lock of an article, do they talk to each other directly? The answer is no. In here, I introduce another actor called broadcaster. All the broadcast message should come from the leaf node, go to the master node. And the master node, master node should send a specific message containing the original message as well as the list of all the alive leaf node to the broadcaster. And the broadcaster will have some custom logic inside to build and to say, hey, which leaf node I need to route it to. One of the benefits of system is that um, when the other data is coming from, let's say, the controller or from even outside of the system, let's say we have our own main CMS that is a couple years ago written in Java using ActiveMQ, Active we can have the same message, work uh, message flow coming down to the system. It is much easier to debug and maintain. So um, as I said, the master node is sitting there forever, but the leave node actually has its own life cycle. When a user log out, let's say Darth Vader in this case, the master node will receive an uh, unsubscribe message, and it will decide like, hey, is this the last connection of the user account? If yes, then it will basically send, um, it will send a poison pill down to the leave node and to kill it. Of course, at the same time, it will, it will release all the resources that has been claimed by this user account. Garbage collected. Everyone happy? So um, that's actually a slight issue here is when there is an only tab and user got refresh the application. The system will queue the leave node and restart it right away, create it right away. The, this is the performance glitch that um, is neglectable. At least um, none of the user has been noticed and complained about this. So, um, but I still see this is the limitation that we have so far. So, um, this is a simple overview of the system that we have. Um, there is a lot of future work to be done. Uh, let's say, like introducing layers of uh, supervisor actors, adding router to scale up horizontally, and uh, maybe isolating multiple failure zone by user properties, user accounts, stuff like that, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we have applied a lot of design pattern on the system that we have. Uh, some are planned, some are being, like some of the conclusion after being done, no matter what, they're really helpful. Um, end result. The user feedback are really good. They're happy about it. Um, we have a really sharp learning curve during the project. Play for what really, really allow us to pick up development really quickly. Um, Aka, we spend some time to get everyone um, to uh, familiar with the concept of the actor and the edge synchronized system model. Um, but still, it is a really sharp learning curve. Um, our team have two back-end developer, one front-end person, and a technical lead. We spent three months for, uh, building, building the system from scratch um, and have the first, uh, first piece of code to the production. And um, of course, that was a single user pilot at that point, but that was uh, pretty impressive. So uh, after running in full speed for a couple months already, users are very happy with the new technology compared to the old school um, Windows application merged with the Microsoft Word. They are now using uh, Blackbeard to doing editing and sharing, sharing their work seamlessly with their worker. Yep, welcome to the new technology. So um, we do have a lot of fun building a system. Uh, we experimenting a lot of uh, different frameworks. We fight for methodology and um, patterns to, do a, to have a better solution. And we got stabbed in the face by the system failure and the performance issue, but they were, those are really good Scala experience. So what do we learn from that? There's a couple points I, I would like to share in here. Um, first, the future API, API in Play Framework is one of the most powerful and yet easily be over, 
overlook components. It is designed to apply um, discriminatory discriminatory uh, to all the HTTP request. We took the advantage of this pattern to apply the authentication and creating a lot of uh, access lock. So this is a small piece of code actually uh, wrapping up all the requests that we have and trying to do the authentication um, on uh, one by one on the, on the request base. This is pretty nice and neat. And uh, next one. When I first worked on the system, um, I wrote a couple helper function, a uh, private helper function in the controller. And then I found out, hey, I can't unit test it because the test package cannot access it. Uh, luckily, actually, Scala allows us to have a qualifier on the modifier. So we can, basic, we can actually say, like, private scrap like a controller saying, hey, this guy is, is, the scope of this guy actually is within the package. So the testing package now can access the, the, the the function directly. Happy testing. And next. Okay. Um, JSON inception is really cool. Uh, but sometimes you may want some, um, some level of flexibility. Um, you should write a couple, couple version of the implicit write of your zeroized object, zeroizable object, in, let's say in different situation. Maybe your front end just asking for, for the preview, for the bootstrap. You can just show like only the required or the necessary, necessary field that you want. Or if you're serializing a database object that have a lot of relational components, you can get everything at once. This simple code is actually um, defining the wrong rights and trying to pass to the json.json method. Pass it in the second list of the uh, sec yeah, the second list, uh, the second of the parameter list, which is supposedly getting an implicit function. So, all the message actually form a command system in the actor model um, to tell each other or some other actor to do some sort of work. Although this WebSocket allow a duplex connection, duplex communication, we basically allow all the command action from the front end coming through the RESTful call rather than the RESTful, uh, RESTful uh, I mean, rather than the WebSocket message. The reason is that it is a better practice for the MVC model on the front end, and there is also easier to keep track, uh, to validate and to do logging and tracking on the back end side. And um, when we need, when they really need to, is you need to apply some, uh, you need to apply the play JSON validation API they are really neat. And we are looking forward to have the, well, we're looking forward to the play 2.3 generic validation API there even better. And one of the bonus benefit of that is you, we can keep the actor logic as simple as possible. Because basically we, we take all the expensive competition out of the actor, leave it to the controller level. This is what we want. All right, um, next. When, when we are using future within the actor receive function, we have to be very careful. Um, threading is dangerous, even in Scala. When dispatching a work to the future within the receive function, you have to remember that once the future is finished, when it's done, the sender, the sender reference is no longer there. So the code is, is actually a really bad code because it will result in the dead letters, the sender, the sender reference is no longer there. Um, if user really need to do that, you can actually capture it in the local variable. So um, last one. Sometimes just dispatch your work to future rather than um, setting up a new actor system, creating multiple actor that will actually do the same magic. Um, when using future, one thing you have to remember is, well, suggestion is that define your own execution contest, um, aka the thread pool. We learn it from a really hard way. Um, anyone who is smiling now know what I'm talking about. Um, there is a blocking call in one of the future in the system almost take down the entire system that we have in production one time. So, okay. Um, 
this is the end of the presentations. Uh, we have a lot of fun during the system uh, that I would like to share also. So please feel free to, log, uh, to visit our blog there. Um, our blog for the black beer should be uh, posted up soon, very soon next week. And you can also contact me through email. So um, thank you very much for your time. <laughs>